Hello everyone and welcome! In this lesson we are going to cover Firebase Data Modeling Essentials. Stay tuned, it's coming right up! So let's talk about Firebase Data Modeling and the push keys. So why did we model the data like this? So we added here a node of courses and we added a node of lessons. And we added here a third node, lessons per course. So why would we want to do this? Well, to understand this, let's go back to our program. Here in the constructor of our application component, we are creating a reference to the root of the database. So this root node corresponds to, let's collapse all the, actually there is a button here, collapse all data. The root corresponds to this, the final project recording node. So when we subscribe to the value of this node, notice that this is an open subscription. This function, this callback will be called each time that we receive a new value and we will receive a new snapshot. So if we just run this program, what we are going to receive here as value, take a look. This is the whole database. So whenever we select a node in Firebase, we get everything, literally everything under that node. We cannot, let's say that, for example, we had put the lessons inside courses. There was here a property named lessons. If we would query a course, we would also get all of its lessons, but maybe we just want to show a list of courses. So this is why in Firebase it's important. So it's the same thing as in a relational database. You want to denormalize your data. You want in Firebase to keep your data as flat as possible. So do not use multiple levels of nesting. Instead of that, insert your entities in lists. And if you want to link them together, one way of doing it is to create an association node where you associate the entries together. So to summarize, in Firebase you should try to always keep your data as flat as possible. Preferably put your entities in a top level node which has the name of the entity, like for example courses or lessons. If you want to associate the data together, make sure to use an association node where you link the data using its key. So we are going to learn more about what are these push keys exactly. Remember, the, the structure of the database is arbitrary, so nothing prevents you in Firebase from using data nesting. You could put the lessons nested inside the courses, assuming that a lesson only belongs to a course. But let's say that, for example, in the future, that is not true anymore. You could have a lesson that belongs to two courses. That would be quite troublesome to fix, to refactor. Also, let's say that you assume initially that there aren't many lessons per course, so you wouldn't fall into performance problems. Also, that could very easily change in the future. You could have courses with a lot of lessons. Again, refactoring that would be very troublesome. I would advise you to normalize your data as much as possible from the beginning and systematically. This is probably the safest and most future-proof approach for structuring your data in Firebase. Now that we know a bit about data modeling, it's time to answer the question what are these strange-looking push keys? We will not wait any further, we are going to go through it in the next lesson.